This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Chip in Tampa, Florida, on January 13, 2006. American Indian Fairy Tales, collected by Henry R. Schoolcraft, and retold by W. T. Larned. Iagu, the Storyteller There never was any one so wise and knowing as old Iagu. There never was an Indian who saw and heard so much. He knew the secrets of the woods and the fields, and understood the language of birds and beasts. All his life long he had lived out of doors, wandering far in the forest where the wild deer hide, or skimming the waters of the lake in his birch-bark canoe. Besides the things he had learned for himself, Iagu knew much more. He knew the fairy tales and the wonder stories told him by his grandfather, who had heard them from his grandfather, and so on away back to the time when the world was young and strange, and there was magic in almost everything. Iagu was a great favorite with the children. No one knew better where to find the beautiful colored shells which he strung into necklaces for the little girls. No one could teach them so well just where to look for the grasses which their nimble fingers wove into baskets. For the boys he made bows and arrows, bows from the ash tree that would bend far back without breaking, and arrows strong and straight from the sturdy oak. But most of all Iagu won the children's hearts with his stories. Where did the robin get his red breast? How did fire find its way into the world so that an Indian can get it out by rubbing two sticks together? Why was Coyote, the prairie wolf, so much cleverer than all the other animals? And why was he always looking behind him when he ran? It was old Iagu who could tell you where and why. Now winter was the time for storytelling. When the snow lay deep on the ground, the north wind came howling from his home in the land of ice, and the cold moon shone from the frosty sky. It was then that the Indians gathered in the wigwam. It was then that Iagu sat by the fire of blazing logs, and the little boys and girls gathered round him. Ooh, ooh, wailed the north wind. The sparks leapt up, and Iagu laid another log on the fire. Ooh, ooh. What a mischievous old fellow was this north wind. One could almost see him, his flowing hair all hung with icicles. If the wigwam were not so strong, he would blow it down, and if the fire were not so bright, he would put it out. But this wigwam was made on purpose for just such a time as this, and the forest nearby had logs to last for ever. So the north wind could only gnash his teeth and say, Ooh, One little girl, more timid than the rest, would draw nearer, and put her hand on the old man's arm. Oh, Iagu, she said, just listen. Do you think he can hurt us? Have no fear, answered Iagu. The north wind can do no harm to anyone who is brave and cheerful. He blusters and makes a lot of noise. But at heart he is really a big coward, and the fire will soon frighten him away. Suppose I tell you a story about it. And the story Iagu told we shall now tell to you. The story of how Shingibis fooled the north wind. So ends Iagu the Storyteller.